Hello everybody, it is Mike Levin on Saturday, February 27th, 2021. And I'm going to show you some interesting retooling on my next video, going from the incredibly popular requests package to the new HTTPX package, which now supports concurrent mode and is kept API compatible. And in doing the exploring, I realized one of the things that I really wanted to do is to frequently clear the output and restart the kernel. Restart kernel and clear output. And if you go up there, you'll see that I have a keyboard shortcut there, which is not normally there by default. It should be, but I think they're trying to keep people from choosing choosing to lose their work accidentally by hitting that on the keyboard. So if I do that, Control shift r it does make you confirm, but you'll see the numbers that were next to those things went away and I could start executing code. But that's not what I'm going to do right now because that's in the next video. On this video, I'm going to show you how I went into, well, I'll get rid of it initially, settings. Advanced Settings Editor, and it gives you this next uh, pane here. It moves it in from there. So if you do, uh, I guess, Control B, it'll get rid of that, and you'll just look at this editor. It's a little easier to look at. And in there, it's already highlighted on keyboard shortcuts, and it already has my user preferences showing there. But were it on any of these other things, the user preferences would be blank. So first it takes understanding the general system that's done here, where when you want to make an edit, you don't actually edit this file to the left, which you can see it has a certain number of things that are commented out, and then a certain number of things that are active keyboard shortcuts. And you can read what they are. They're very human readable. So what we're effectively doing here is we're just taking this object here from that curly bracket to that curly bracket and we're adding it to this JSON dictionary here. It's probably inserting it right after that, after this object. So now we have a new keyboard uh, shortcut. If I were to want to say uh, run all, I would take that, I would copy it, and put the comma to keep good JSON object notation. It'll tell me I have an error because, uh, let's see, invalid character. That was not the one I was expecting. So shortcuts colon, see how it's that? It's this that's being repeated. And so even that list is probably incorrect here. And then I put a comma here because it's a series of shortcuts. No, I have that wrong. Well, it says no errors found. Shortcuts colon. Yeah, list, dictionary object, dictionary object. So it's a list of dictionary objects, but it's duplicate. So let's get that run all command. And then I'll just wrap this up as a, as a really short video. You can generally find it by seeing what menu it's under and uh, run run all no keyboard shortcut but it's under the run menu so you look through here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll just search for run all and there it is so what I'm gonna do is do I already use control shift R for reset kernel I think that is like refresh restart kernel you know it's clearing all the outputs it's good so to actually run it all I'm going to do control shift X. So it's R and X. They're close enough to each other that, but that's so close to copy. I want to stay away from C and X uh, and V because copy paste. So if control shift R is for to clear all fields, reset the kernel, clear fields, and then to run all control R, control run all. E for execute, just to the left of R. So run, execute, or restart, execute. Yes, so control shift E I shall use. So I just change this to an E here. And then I have to change what's actually being selected to that value that they're showing here. And you'll see I'm replacing kernel menu, restart and clear, which is the same as the one above that, with 
whoops. Hope I didn't get a carriage return in there or a line feed. Control C. Highlight just the part you want. Control V. There, that's better. Look it over to make sure. Data JP Code Runner. Okay, I guess it's selector is fine. And it's a before and after under run. There is no sh keyboard shortcut next to run all. I do a control S for save. And there it is, run all. So I'm actually gonna do that over here and give you a preview of the, uh, of the next video. This was really interesting. Uh, I'll bring back this so it looks a little more correct. I'm in untitled.ipynb under this test directory. And I found this sample code here which when I try to run it, I lift it up off of this page here, which I'll tell you all about. I get this error, and it's a error I very much recognize by my previous attempts to move to asynchronous coding inside of Jupyter Lab. Wah, wah. There's already an event loop running in Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab. There is always a hasn't finished yet Python program running. That's what makes it a REPL. It's always running. Read eval print loop. It just adds to the chain of stuff uh, being executed. So the event loop that is traditionally exited, exited out of after your first run, uh, so that when you run a subsequent thing, it doesn't interfere. And when you're in a REPL environment, it does interfere because you can't have nested event loops. So this guy here, I found the advice to do that. Well, I'm jumping ahead. I showed you how to do keyboard shortcuts. And uh, this is where we'll pick up if you're like me and moving from the requests package to HTTPX or things like it, AIO, HTTP. I looked at the whole array of stuff that people are using as common wisdom as the replacement, the heir parents today. I'm making my choices because of API compatibility and that's coming up next. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to bind your keyboard shortcuts in Jupyter Lab because it is life-changing. Bam. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.